Straight Shift. With the Car Chick, the podcast that's all about cars, buying, selling, fixing, and driving. And sometimes pretty fast to hear the Car Chick. Now, here's he is. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to The Straight Shift. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy. And in the case of those of us in the Southeast, dry, as if 2020 has been crazy enough with a pandemic and, oh, let's see, a record number of tornadoes. Now we've got Tropical Storm Bertha sitting right over the Carolinas, dumping massive amounts of rain. It's just nuts. Seriously, my neighbor's kids yesterday were literally floating down our street on their pool floats. That is how much water has been coming down here. It's just crazy, crazy. So on that note, I got to get on my soapbox for just a second. For those of you who are in deluge states right now, please drive extra carefully and extra safely with the rain. As I have preached before on podcasts that I've done on tires and safety, when your tires are 50% worn out, you you still have got a lot of tread remaining, but just that amount of wear will give you little to no stopping power in the rain. Your tires do not have deep enough grooves, you know, the tread to channel away all of that water. Super easy to hydroplane. So if you're out driving in this crazy weather, just please be extra, extra careful, especially if you don't have brand spanking new tires. All right, I'm getting down off the soapbox now. There's your public service announcement for the day. Speaking of Bertha, I think that's a great name for a hurricane, but it's also the name that I gave to a racing minivan. Yes, there is a racing minivan in the 24 Hours of Lemons. There's actually several, but Bertha is owned by one of the teams out of Knoxville that I'm friends with and I've raced with in the past. And Bertha is unique because she is a dual engine all-wheel drive minivan that when running properly can make 500 horsepower. It's insane because they've got one Ford SVT motor running the front wheels and a second one driving the back wheels. And that's how you get the all-wheel drive. They have a lot of cooling problems with the rear engine. So Bertha is not always running on both motors, but when she is, she's an absolute beast on the racetrack, minus the hippopotamus quality body roll. But I'm very, I have a very soft spot in my heart for Bertha specifically, but uh, you don't always get that opportunity to, to race a minivan. Last month, I talked about great cars for moms or dads that are not minivans, but Minivans really are a practical, convenient, useful choice for families. So today we're going to talk about a minivan, but not just any minivan. A minivan that is going to be an absolute game changer in the industry. And what I'm talking about is the fully redesigned 2021 Toyota Sienna. The Sienna has been the most solid, reliable, if somewhat boring, Okay, maybe totally boring. People mover on the market since it debuted back in 1998 when it replaced the weird and totally hideous mid-engine Toyota Previa minivan. If you have never heard of a Toyota Previa, Google that. It's P-R-E-V-I-A. It's this weird little egg-shaped ugly as sin minivan that did not last long on the U.S. market. It did much better over in the Asian market, but uh, crazy, crazy design. But they replaced it with a Sienna. And since 98, there have been three generations because Toyota doesn't redesign their vehicles that often. And the last redesign of the Sienna was back in 2011. So this thing is dated. It's been way overdue for some serious updates and changes. And guess what? It is getting them in spades. Toyota just released the official pictures and specs and information on the upcoming 2021 Sienna a little over a week ago. And holy cow, people, it is wild. Not a word you would think to assume, you know, to put with a minivan. But I swear, this is something that Joan Jetson probably would have driven. Toyota and its luxury brand Lexus, they have been moving towards a more aggressive kind of angular styling with all their vehicles over the last several years. And some people love them and some people think they're ugly. It's always personal preference on that. But 
you can't argue that they're very distinctive now in the marketplace, whereas Lexus and Toyota used to just be very blah, bland, you know, blend into the background. If you want, you know, to commit a crime in a nondescript vehicle, you know, you could pick a Toyota, but not anymore. Things are looking a little funkier now than they used to. And the Sienna will take funky to a whole nother level. The new model was fully designed and engineered right here in the United States, and it's going to continue to be built at Toyota's plants in Indiana. So this is an all-American vehicle. But the futuristic design of it has been inspired by the iconic Shinkansen Japanese bullet train. If you've never seen a bullet train, Google that too, because that's the coolest thing ever. This thing goes just ridiculous speeds and looks amazing. You know, because if you're going to drive a minivan, why not drive one that looks like a bullet train? The headlights are mounted really high and they're kind of skinny. They almost look like they're squinting, but they're stretched around the sides of the vehicle, kind of like they've been shaped by the wind as this thing, you know, cuts down the road at ridiculous speeds, which it would if I were driving it. And then it's got that big lower grill that has become common on the Toyotas and the Lexus. And that gives it kind of a mean, but also stable stance to it. And then it has these sculpted side body panels that then wrap around and flow seamlessly into an integrated black taillight housing, which looks really cool, but is also designed to be super aerodynamic. So this thing can get great gas mileage. This thing looks fast. It looks sleek. It looks confident. Everything about this minivan says, get the f*** out of my way. And that is my kind of minivan. I am posting pictures of the Sienna onto my Facebook and my Instagram. So you can check those out. The links to all my social media are up on the top of my website at thekarchik.com. I've got all the little icons. So go to my Instagram or Facebook to check out these pictures of it. It's, it's a crazy design. I know a lot of people may look at it and think it's really ugly and that's fine. I personally think that with things like shoes and light fixtures and minivans, something that is so ugly it's cool is just right in my wheelhouse. I, I like funky. So the designers of the new Sienna, they, they didn't just stop at funky styling. They really had a goal of reimagining the very concept of what a minivan is because they wanted to support a wider array of cycles in our life and the activities that we do with our families. So it's not something that you just buy and drive because you have toddlers or little kids that you have to get to school or maybe younger kids that you've got to take everybody to their soccer games or carpool with other parents. This is a van that can also take your family camping. You can take it on vacation. You can take it to the lake and maybe tow a jet ski because it can come in all-wheel drive. It can tow up to 3,500 pounds, which isn't going to tow a huge amount of stuff, but it'll allow you to pull maybe a small activity trailer. It'll allow you to haul your bikes. You can maybe tow a jet ski or two. You can you know, do a little bit with 3,500 pounds, which is a good towing capacity for a minivan. But Toyota has also partnered with Yakima, which makes outdoor accessories. So you can get a roof carrier for your bike rack or your kayak or your paddle board, put tents up there. It's got racks for the back. These are the types of things that you normally think of that you buy and put on top of a, a Subaru Outback to go out to do your outdoor adventures. But now you can also do your outdoor family adventures in a Sienna minivan. I mean, why not? It's also got some other neat things. So if you really want to go all out, you can get one that has a built-in vacuum cleaner and a refrigerator. So talk about camping in style. And you can even get a factory installed 1500 watt inverter that has a 120 volt AC outlet. So you can plug in all of your power equipment. I mean, you can probably like actually even plug in your hairdryer, although I would be a little worried that might blow a fuse. But again, if you want to camp in style, the new 2021 Sienna can allow you guys to do that. It's truly a brand new vehicle. It was redesigned from the ground up. So it's got a brand new chassis, full new electrical platform. And here's the kicker. It is standard hybrid drivetrain. Every 2021 Sienna out there will have a 2.5 liter gasoline engine but it'll be paired with two electric motors. So 
working together, that's all going to produce about 243 horsepower. And that's less than the current Sienna, which has just a regular petrol V6 motor. But the trade-off to that lower horsepower is you get a lot more gas mileage. It's going to get probably a combined 33 city and highway gas mileage, which is way more than the 21 combined that you get now with the Siennas. And you get like 24 combined with the Honda Odyssey. Even the Chrysler Pacifica, which is a plug-in hybrid, only gets about 29 to 30 combined. And the Sienna's not going to be a plug-in hybrid. It's going to be a regular hybrid. But, you know, to get an average of 33 miles to the gallon out of a minivan, that's, that's pretty amazing. And if you want the all-wheel drive model, it's going to add a third electric motor that drives the rear wheels. Kind of like Bertha, except that I'm sure that Toyota has worked out the cooling problems. So it's going to work. Bertha doesn't always work, but... It's just amazing. It would, could have three electrical motors driving the different wheels. This thing is going to have torque out the wazoo. And another reason that they did a third motor on the all-wheel drive is they have a new type of all-wheel drive system that they call electronic on-demand all-wheel drive. Normally with an all-wheel drive vehicle, you have this really heavy transfer case and this massive drive shaft that cuts into your interior cabin space to drive the rear wheels. And this one uses that independent third electric motor to power them with instant additional traction, instant additional torque that you're going to need at all speeds. So it's a pretty revolutionary design. And because Toyota came up with it, unlike other revolutionary designs in the marketplace, this one I suspect will actually work, which is great. And they also continue to raise the bar in the safety realm. They're putting blind spot monitoring on all the trim levels. You're going to get all your usual Toyota safety aids that they lead the industry with. They call it the Toyota Safety Sense System. Plus, you're going to get 10 freaking airbags to cover all three roads, including built into the seats, enhanced vehicle stability control, traction control, electronic brake force distribution, braking assist, of course, anti-lock brakes, obviously, start-stop technology. So, yeah, this minivan is going to keep your family safe, even if you are a crappy driver. Please don't be a crappy driver. But if you are, this will be a really safe minivan for you. I'm going to take a really quick break and we're going to talk about the crazy interior design of this thing, some of the other technology, as well as what is my very favorite feature on the new 2021 Sienna. So I will be right back after this. Do you hate car shopping? Do you worry about being taken advantage of? or about finding the right car at a great price. Buying a car can be a frustrating and time-consuming experience. But what if you could get a great deal without having to do a ton of research, without having to haggle, and without the fear of buying a lemon? You can. As your personal car shopper, the Car Chick will help you pick the perfect car based on your unique lifestyle, budget, and personality. She'll handle all of the legwork and negotiating for you. All you have to do is sign the papers and take the keys. It's that easy. To learn how the Car Chick can save you time, money, and hassle on your next car purchase, give us a call at 704-248-8706. That's 704-248-8706. Or visit us on the web at thecarchick.com. Ah, the Car Chick is back. For more Straight Shift. Welcome back. We are talking today about the brand spanking new upcoming 2021 Toyota Sienna minivan. And you wouldn't think that I would get so excited about a minivan, but this one excites me. So that says something about this vehicle and how cool it's going to be. The Toyota called the third generation of Sienna, we affectionately referred to it in the market as the Swagger Wagon because they had really upped the quality of the interior of the top models so that you could you know, have a nicer minivan experience. And they have upped the ante even on that for the 2021 model. Seriously, the top limited and platinum trims look like a dang Lexus on the inside. Because just because you're hauling the kids around does not mean that you want to feel like you're driving a school bus. 
moms and dads deserve to be comfortable and even pampered for putting up with their rugrats. And you also need to feel like the, the layout and the controls make sense. They're easy to use to minimize the distractions because distractions are what you got in the back two sets of seats. So Toyota designed an all new, very modern instrument panel with this gigantous, large touchscreen display in the middle. Looks like they just stuck a big iPad on there, kind of like they have in the Teslas. But it makes it really easy to see. You don't have to move your eye line away from the road to glance down at it. It's right within easy reaching distance. They have also given you a lot of storage because you need storage in a minivan, not just in the cargo area, but in the cabin area for all the junk you bring with you in the car. And they have what's called a bridge console. This is where they've taken the armrest and just float it through the middle of the cabin between the driver and passenger seat. And then it flows right into the dash and that instrument panel. So it's very, very ergonomic. And styling wise, it also looks very elegant. It allows you to have a more comfortable driving experience. It helps reduce the stress of driving, which we have just driving around anyway, whether you've got kids in the back or not, that just makes it even worse because you can reach everything. Everything is ergonomic and it's designed around the driver and you also get things like two giant cup holders to hold all of your coffee it's got a wireless charger for your phone it's got storage for all your little smaller items like your sunglasses and your hand sanitizer and everything else that we we put into the car and beneath that bridge console there is a giant bin underneath it where you can actually fit your purse. And I'm not talking about a cute little pocketbook. I'm talking about the big honking purse that most of us women carry. There's finally a space for it. So it's not taking up space in the passenger's footwell. You know, you're not sitting it in the passenger seat where it might tip over if you hit your brakes suddenly. I seriously have to seat belt in my purse into the passenger seat and Maggie. And, and mostly that's because of the way I drive. But it's also because I don't have a place for it. And in the Sienna, there's going to be a nice place perfectly designed for your purse or your laptop bag or whatever it is that you're carrying around in the car with you. The backseat passengers are also going to get some pampering. They're not being completely left out. The whole interior is very, very spacious and very comfortable. So you get this just sense of almost being in a living room <laughs> in this thing. The vehicle is wider and longer than the older Sienna, so they've made a little bit more space for passengers and cargo. But you can get these second row captain's chairs that they called the super long slide seats. <laughs> I love how they come up with the names for these things, but it's, it's an accurate description. The seats slide forward and back a total of 25 inches. So whether you have short legs or you've got super long legs, you know, if you're trying to cram, you know, teenage basketball players into the back of this minivan, you can do it. There's room and everybody is going to be comfortable. And on the top trim level, they even have foot rests. You know, when you get into a lazy boy recliner and you recline back and the foot rest comes up, this is how those seats work. It's literally like having two lazy boys in the second row of your minivan. So you can take a nap back there on long road trips. Everybody can be super comfortable. It's just, it's beautiful. And you don't see that type of functionality on a Toyota normally. They, they've had these, you know, the Kia's had it on the Sedona in the past. They've had these things, but I swear, you got to look at these interior pictures. It's just so, so swanky. Now, the downside is the second row seats are no longer removable, and that's due to the airbags that are built in the size of them. So if you're looking for a minivan where you can take the second and third rows out to have a boatload of cargo space, that's what my father-in-law does. He bought my old Dodge Caravan that had been my dad's car, his golf mobile, and he uses it to transport all of his musical equipment because he has a band. So we have all the seats taken out of that one for all of the band equipment. So you're not going to be able to do that in the Sienna, and that's becoming increasingly difficult anyway because most manufacturers are starting to build the airbags inside the seats themselves for safety, but it means you can't take the second row seats out. So this is no longer a massive cargo van if you need a cargo van, buy a cargo van. 
The cabin is also really super quiet. This is something Toyota has been working on on all of their vehicles over the last few years. So they focused on not just reducing the road noise and the engine noise. That's what most manufacturers think of. But the engineers specifically focused on reducing noises in the very specific frequencies made by human voices when they are talking. So the little chatty voices in the back seat are not going to carry as well up to the driver and front passenger. So the grown-ups might get a little more peace and quiet, even if the kids are still yapping in the back seat. And similarly, adults can talk in the front seat or play their music on the stereo system in the front seat while the kids are napping in the back and you might not wake them up. But don't worry about not being able to hear your kids or being able to communicate with your kids because it will still have the driver easy speak system that has been on the previous generation in Sienna, which is an intercom system that when you you know hear a minor altercation in the back seat, you can hit the intercom button. It will cut out whatever they're playing, you know, the radio, their rear DVD, whatever rear audio, and it will transfer your best mom voice into the back so that you can discipline your little urchins. So that's the driver easy speak system is really great for parents. You don't have to turn around and raise your voice and yell at the kids. You can just hit the button and the mom voice will come through the speakers. The quiet cabin also lets you enjoy, they've got a really nice JBL stereo system in there. There's an optional rear entertainment system. You get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Alexa standard. Seven USB ports, XM radio, onboard Wi-Fi hotspot. Pretty much any type of entertainment you want to have in this vehicle, you can do it. It's got it. Another technology that they've taken kind of to the next level is the backup cameras. Backup cameras have been in all of your minivans and SUVs and trucks for years now by law. But... They focused on being able to see what's behind and around the vehicle. This is critical for safety, but the Sienna has taken that to the next level of the technology, which we've started seeing also on pickup trucks the last design year. You still get your standard backup camera that features that projected path, so it gives you the lines and kind of as you turn the wheel, the lines shift so that you see really exactly the path the car is going to travel. And some of the higher trim levels have an even wider view. So you can, it helps you kind of see around the edges of things, which is great when you're trying to back out of parking spaces, like a Lowe's or Home Depot and everything there is a giant SUV or truck. It also has a digital rear view mirror on certain trim levels. And this functions as a standard mirror most of the time. But let's say you've got a bunch of crap in the back. You've got some cargo or you've got your passengers. And when you look in the rear view mirror, something is blocking your view out the back of the van. So especially when you've loaded up the car to take the family on vacation, you can never see out the back. With a touch of a button, it shifts the view to the camera that is mounted on the back of the vehicle. So it basically makes everything inside the car magically vanish so that you can still see what's going on out the back. And it can do that while you're driving. It's not just while you're in reverse. If you need to glance back there to see cars behind you, whatever's going on, you can hit that button and it magically makes everything in your view vanish. They've put this on, you know, Ford and Chevy have been putting this on their new pickup trucks so that when the truck is hauling a trailer, and of course the trailer is blocking your view out the back, you can hit this button and it will show you a camera view that basically makes the trailer vanish and you can still see behind you. I, it's total magic and it's amazing. You can also get an available what's called a bird's eye view camera with perimeter scan. And this is kind of like having your own drone above the vehicle to show you everything that's going on, but you don't actually have to drive the drone. It gives you a live 360 view. So not just when you're trying to back up, but a live 360 view to see anything that's going on around you. It's, it's great for trying to see if there are children or small animals that might be close to your vehicle. If you're trying to, you're going a little bit off road to get to that camping spot and you want to make sure you're not going to be hitting any rocks or you're, you're trying to maneuver the car between some tight things, you'll be able to see everything that's going on. So there is no excuse for hitting anything if you have one of these minivans. But my absolute favorite feature and this is just one of those silly things, but 
Power sliding doors on minivans, that was one of the first game changers for parents. The power sliding doors were introduced about 20 years ago. Uh, Chrysler brought that out on their, what was then their town and country minivan. And now everybody's got power sliding doors on the minivans. Similarly, the hands-free lift gate technology, where it's been available on SUVs and some minivans to where you kind of wave your foot underneath the rear bumper and the power lift gate magically opens, makes a world of difference to folks that have their hands full, whether you're carrying groceries or you're carrying small children or whatever. You don't have to do anything except, you know, balance on one foot and wave your foot underneath the bumper and the lift gate opens. Toyota has combined these two technologies into what they call the kick open and closed sliding doors. Now you don't actually kick the door like we did on the old Saturns. You remember <laughs> remember Saturns the way they were built? You could actually kick the body panels and it wouldn't dent it. We did that all the time. Drove my father crazy when he had a Saturn. But rather, just like with the rear bumper, you just wave your foot underneath the the edge, the side of the car, and the sliding side door will magically open. You don't have to push a button. I think that is going to be fantastic for if you've got a bunch of stuff in your arms and you're, you're holding a baby, you're trying to get the door open to put the baby in the car seat. I think for a lot of parents, especially with young children, that's going to make a huge difference for them. And why did it take them this long to figure out that you can implement that lift gate technology to the side doors? So it, it's weird little nerdy things like that that get me excited. So you can see this, the 2021 Sienna is going to have so many amazing features, but you know, bottom line for me always is, okay, how does it drive? And I can't say personally how it drives because I have not yet gotten my hands on one of Toyota's pre-release marketing cars to play with, although I'm working on that. But the engineers have designed it to have really ultra smooth acceleration with very little noise. And that's an advantage of having a hybrid drivetrain because you do have a smoother torque curve. Electric motors are smoother than petrol motors. So you can still program it and tune it to get that super smooth acceleration. And when it's transitioning from the electric motor to the petrol motor, they've made that very smooth. The shifting between gears, super duper smooth. But the other thing, and I mentioned this earlier, that I love about electric motors and hybrid drivetrains is you get a ridiculous amount of torque or can get a ridiculous amount of torque from an electric motor. So, you know, we always joked about the Prius that, you know, back in the day when you remember that situation where there, there was this whole big to do about this unanticipated acceleration with the Toyota Prius. And oh my God, it's causing all these accidents because the car just all of a sudden accelerates on its own. And, you know, I always made the joke that, hello, people, it's a Prius. Any acceleration is going to be unanticipated. But <laughs> it, it was just, you, you had a very lackluster acceleration with that vehicle. With this one, when you put your foot on the gas, you know, the gas, put your foot on the pedal, because <laughs> really the electric motor is going to kick in first, you're going to get some, real, it's going to jump off the line. So you're going to be able to pull out into traffic. You're going to be able to accelerate getting on the freeway. And, and as you get to the higher speed, you'll feel that transition. So you're going to be able to get up and go in this vehicle, but still get your good hybrid gas mileage. But they have also given you the option to have some control over that performance. So they have different driving modes. So you can tailor how the car performs to whatever driving style you would like. They've got EV mode, normal mode, eco mode, and sport mode. Normal mode is just your basic drive around town. It's performing the way, you know, in an average kind of way. Sport mode is going to unlock that extra torque and boost from the hybrid system. So you're going to get improved acceleration. You're going to really maximize that torque. This is the mode that I would drive in at all times. There's an eco mode, and that's going to maximize both your fuel economy, but also maximize your battery life on the hybrid battery. So you're going to get just the, the best economical performance out of that vehicle. And then the EV mode, and this is cool. This is something that I've not seen on a hybrid vehicle. This allows you to drive truly an electric only mode. 
it will not kick into the petrol motor. This is only for slower speeds, short distances. This is if you have to run to the grocery store because crap, you ran out of milk or whatever, and you just need to zip a mile down the road to the grocery store, pick up what you need and zip back. And you're going to be, you know, under, you know, keeping to 35 miles an hour the whole way. And the whole trip's going to take you about 10 minutes round trip. You can put it in EV mode and you're only going to use electricity. And that, again, is going to extend that overall fuel economy of the hybrid vehicle. It's pretty cool. You also are going to get the normal warranty that you would always get with Toyota, the three or 36,000 miles. But the powertrain warranty will cover all of the hybrid components, including that hybrid battery, because that's a big fear for a lot of people with hybrids. They're like, oh, how long is that hybrid battery going to last? And the hybrid technology has really come a long way, and Toyota has, of course, led the industry with that. The Prius has been around forever, and they've really nailed the hybrid battery technology. And so the powertrain warranty on all those hybrid components is going to be 10 years, 150,000 miles. So you're not going to have to worry about that hybrid battery for a really long time. The 2021 Sienna is not expected to go on sale until about the end of this year. And of course, that's, you know, COVID situation permitting and make sure that all the production plants <laughs> will still be open, both in the U.S. and around the world for parts. But when it comes out, it's going to be available in five trim levels. So you're going to have the LE, the XLE, the XSE, which is the more sporty model. And all those trim levels are going to be available with these plus packages that give you some extra bells and whistles. And then you get up to the very swanky limited and platinum levels, which will be expensive, I'm sure. Pricing has not officially been released, but we're expecting the base LE model to start in the low 30s. And I wouldn't be surprised if the fully loaded platinum model tops 50 grand. I mean, it's crazy that you can spend 50 grand on a minivan, but this is definitely a second generation swagger wagon. I can see them taking this platform and swanking it up even more and putting a Lexus badge on it because we you don't really have a lot of options in the minivan world if you still want a luxury vehicle. And I think it'd be pretty cool to have a Lexus minivan. I don't know if there's market data to support a need for one, and I'm sure that the folks at Toyota and Lexus are doing those studies, but personally, I think it would be really, really cool. What do you guys think of the 2021 minivan, the Toyota Sienna? Take a look at the pictures that I posted on my social media. Let me know what you think. Do you think it's ugly? Do you think it's cool? I think it's going to be a game changer because right now there's a problem in the minivan market, in my opinion, because you know, the Honda Odyssey from a feature and functionality standpoint is amazing. It's by far the best minivan on the market. But unfortunately, it is suffering from the massive problem that Honda has with their infotainment system that has caused a class action lawsuit out of California. The user interface and all your cameras and the entertainment system system, just that whole dashboard where you interface with the car is so kludgy that in many situations it's dangerous. And that's why there's a massive class action lawsuit. And as a result, the reliability ratings for the Honda Odyssey have dropped down to below Chrysler. Like I didn't think there was a way to get below Chrysler on bad reliability. But unfortunately, because of this problem, Honda has managed to do it. So right now when I have clients who want a minivan, I'm like, eh, the Odyssey has a lot of great functions, but it has this massive problem. And every client that I bought one of the newer Odysseys for has experienced that problem. So Honda can deny it all they want, but it's very, very real. And, you know, a lot of people think, oh, but it's still under warranty. Well, that's fine. But in order for something to be fixed under warranty, there has to be a fix for it. There's no fix for this problem yet. Han is still working on it. So the Chrysler minivan, which is now called the Chrysler Pacifica, it's, again, got some cool features, but hello, Chrysler products. So, again, not something that's known for its reliability. So, really, the Sienna, if you want a reliable minivan, the Sienna is the only option out there. But the current generation is very dated and kind of boring and just not everybody's cup of tea. So, that's why I'm so excited about this redesign that's coming later this year. Because I think, finally, the Sienna is going to absolutely, hands down, be the only minivan worth 
owning. But I want to know what you guys think. So leave a comment, send me a message to the website, let me know what you think. And next time we're going to celebrate Father's Day. In the meantime, folks, drive safely. I'm out of here. The Straight Shift Podcast is copyright Leanne Shattuck, The Car Chick, 2017. All views expressed by guest and or co-hosts are those of the guest and or co-hosts, and not necessarily those of Leanne Shattuck or The Car Chick. Mm-hmm.